Hello everyone and welcome back to Crypto Empire where we dominate the crypto market. I am your host for today's live stream. My name is Connor and welcome back to the channel. Now first things first as you can see I'm not in my usual setup. Right now I'm in the land down under. I'm coming at you live from Sydney, Australia. Shout out to everybody in the Crypto Empire community from Australia. This place is very, very cool. It's good to be back here. Nonetheless, it's business as usual. Let's talk about the crypto market and what is going on right now. Start things off as we always do with our crypto market overview. Now, shout out to Ladger Doodle. He says, hello, Empire. Thoughts on entering INJ right now? We'll look at INJ right away as soon as we get into these charts. We have Calcutta saying, how was your trip down under, Connor? It was a good trip. It was, I mean, the journey was long. About 18 hours to get here, but nonetheless, we made it in one piece, which is the most important thing. Shout out to Jazzy, shout out to Adrian Kent as well. Appreciate you guys being here in the live chat. If you're just tuning in right now, be sure to smash that like button and get the YouTube algorithm going and sending out the stream to everybody on YouTube. Now, as you can see from the title of the live stream today, the Bitcoin spot ETF approval, that did indeed mark a local top. Right now, Bitcoin is trading for $41,300. Ethereum trading for $2,436 and all coins at large have pulled back substantially from where they were just a few weeks ago before that Bitcoin spot ETF approval. Overall, the market has been very quiet over the weekend. Let's get into these charts. So the first thing I want to show you is the total crypto market cap chart on the daily time frame. Now, as you can see, we have lost this trend line, which is, I mean, it's a very bearish break in market structure. As you can see, this goes all the way back to early October or late October, I should say. And this is when the market really started to, to uptrend. We had consecutive months, right? Around three consecutive months of uptrending. We marked that high in early January, right at the ETF approval, really. And then we have broken this market structure for the downside. Now, with that being said, we lost the trend line. We have not lost the horizontal level over here at 1.57 trillion. So what we want to see if I drop this down to the four hour time frame, it's very simple what we want to see we, we want to start reclaiming these levels. All right, we have this level here. So we want to see Bitcoin go ahead and and reclaim these lows and start making some higher highs. If we can do that on the total market cap, then we can start looking for longs more active long positions. But as of right now, I think it's better to be patient and wait for things to kind of play out. I think this could happen. We, we could be going sideways slash down for another one to two weeks potentially. We have Bitcoin in terms of the grayscale e, uh, ETF, right? That's getting sold off substantially billions of dollars worth and th that needs to be absorbed before we can start uptrending again. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at Bitcoin here, we had a very slow weekend and on the weekly close, we started to sell off a little bit. But on the four hour time frame here, this is the weekend price action. So what does this mean? Now that the ETF is approved, Bitcoin is largely trading like a, tr a traditional financial asset in the sense that we now have weekends off. Nothing happens over the weekend, just like nothing happens over the weekend in the stock market. So this is something that we have to get used to. This is a new phenomenon, a new thing. Nonetheless, let's talk about what's going to happen for Bitcoin. So as you can see from this circle here, I was expecting at least a bounce. All right. I do think there's a very high likelihood we will go even lower than we have already gone here. But with that being said, I would not be surprised to see a small relief bounce, then a rejection and then another move lower. So we have some very key levels of over here, forty three thousand dollars. Now, obviously, that's resistance, that's supply. We also have our four hour EMAs right in that level and also the previous range high, right? This is the previous range high. Okay. So leaning bears here in the short term, but with that being said, if we can find some kind of foothold here and then bounce, I would be looking for a rejection from around the 43 K area before rolling over and heading into the sub 40 K prices. How low will Bitcoin actually go? Well, we have this. If you guys have been watching the streams, you should be familiar with these levels already that I have marked out, right? We have this trend line 
And this is going to come into play at around $39,500. And then we have the daily 200 EMA at 35K. So I would say Bitcoin is going to fill this gap between 40K to 35K. And then I'll be looking for a local bottom before a resume of the uptrend. All right, so overall, market's going to be slow here. It's going to be a little bit painful, in my opinion, over the next, say, two weeks. But once that does subside, remember, we have, we have a lot of bullish narratives coming up with the Bitcoin halving, with the Ethereum spot ETF. There's a lot to look forward to here, but temporary pain before longer term pleasure, if you will. Shout out to Morel1 and All Day Dre saying, what's up? Hey, ha hey, hey, let's get a crypto empire. Good to see you guys. So one more time for Bitcoin. We want to see this low hold or this level hold at 40,700, right? If we can form a reversal here, bounce up to 43K, look for a rejection there. I'm not sure we go much higher. And then a rollover down to 35K to 40K. This would be invalidated if we see Bitcoin start to close above 45,600 on the four hour, right? This orange line. If Bitcoin can start closing above that, then okay, we, we're in business. We can start uptrending. Remember from my video not too long ago, if we took the whole entire length of the bear market from the all time high at 69K down to the, the bear market low at 15,460, the Bitcoin spot ETF. Right, we hit exactly at that 61.8 golden golden pocket retracement, right? And that was the top for the rally, the Bitcoin spot ETF. Turned out to be yet another sell the news event. And now here we are looking for potential pullback levels. And again, 40K to 35K most likely will find some kind of bottom in there. Now let's look at INJ and look at a few altcoins as well. So I and J getting smoked, as you can see, no longer in that trade, um, took a small loss on that. Nonetheless, so Ladger Doodle says thoughts on entering I and J now for a long, I would be very cautious about entering now for a long reason being what I did just discuss, right? I can see Bitcoin heading lower here in the short term. Now, obviously looking at the I and J chart, you know, this is the level where you want to be interested in looking for potential longs, right? We're just at the bottom of the, I mean, it's the bottom of this structure. It's a very obvious support level down here at around $35, 35 to really $33. <clears throat> it's a very obvious structural level of support. But with that being said, look how many times we've been just sitting on it, testing it, right? For one full month, basically, INJ has been sitting on this support. And if Bitcoin is going to go lower here, altcoins will go down further, right? A bigger percentage than Bitcoin. So INJ could very easily kind of break this support and head down here, you know, sub $30 to around 28. So for now on INJ, I would wait for longs. I would want to buy into strength at this point. I wouldn't want to risk capital buying into a shaky uncertain weak market on the long side especially with something like inj right it's cooling off after going like 8x six it went 7x basically it went from like six dollars to 45 dollars so seven and a half x in just a few months and now it's cooling off all right so if if we were to long this i would prefer to go into strength and for me that would be like a flip of 38 to 40 dollars Right, if we start closing four hour candles above, say 38 to 40, then okay, then I can say we're gonna make another leg up higher and we're gonna break out of this range to the upside. But as of right now, there's just too much weakness at large for me to you know, consider risking capital on an INJ long trade right now, if that makes sense. Now we have Luke, Luke Marich, is it, is it a good time to get into Caspa and Render? Let's talk about that. Caspa and Render. And we also have uh, Rigoberto says late night. Good to see you, Rigoberto. And we have Gay Kelly saying finally get in a live stream. Great to see you live, Connor. You are the best. Thank you. I appreciate your support, Gay Kelly. 
Uh, let's take a look at Casper here. So is it a good time to get into Casper? Well, I would say anything inside of this green zone here, which is from 10 cents down to 7.8 cents would be a great entry on Caspa. I think everyone would love Caspa back down here at 5 cents, but I'm not sure that the market will give it. All right, which is why you cannot afford to wait for the perfect entry being with where things are, right? Now, if Bitcoin drops sub 40K, we're, we're going to get a nice retracement on Caspa most likely. So maybe you can get this closer to eight cents. But just to answer your question, anywhere inside of this green zone, I would consider a good price for Caspa from 10 cents down to 7.8 cents. And also render. So render right now looking shaky all right we have you know a pretty substantial trend line break to the downside bounce double top end pattern so this is going to potentially roll over lower towards three dollars that wouldn't be surprising right i view this here as a failed breakout attempt this double top right price couldn't essentially push above resistance at 450 double top here um Trend has obviously flipped bearish. Again, this is the daily time frame. You have a daily trend line break down to support. Two bounces cannot break uh, resistance, turned into a double top. I would be looking for a rollover here and, and a move towards $3 on render. And you're breaking another daily trend line right now, shorter one at that. But yeah, I would look for render if you want to buy this closer to $3. In this area stressful struggle says pulse chain is flying rocket ships so Richard Hart finally decided to step out of hiding and um, and start confronting his battles with the SEC and with that we're seeing some positive price action on Pulse Chain. So that's very exciting. Let's, take, let's open up Safe Trade. By the way, Gridnet GNC now trading on Safe Trade, guys. I'm not sure if you heard about this. Gridnet GNC just got listed on Safe Trade, all right? This was only available over the counter in the Discord. But as of yesterday, they listed on Safe Trade, which is a very, very good start to things. Initial pump up to $18. Okay. Now we're pulling back to around $670. Um, and you know, this is pretty close to, to my entry that I got over the counter currently. But I think it's a very good thing to see Gridnet GNC now listed on an exchange. You can still get it over the counter in the Discord. If you don't know what this is, it's a decentralized operating system proof of work blockchain. It's been in, de in development for a number of years by highly experienced um, you know, programmers, AI guys, researchers. I'm bullish on GNC. It's a coin I'm holding. Anyways, Pulse Chain, yeah, it is flying right now. Again, Richard Hart decided to actually go ahead and, and step out of hiding and start getting vocal, start getting public and fighting back versus the SEC. It's going to be a very interesting battle what happens with Richard Hart. You know, there's a chance he does get locked up. Um, but hey, at least he's now being vocal about things. And you're seeing, you know, Pulse Chain double from the bottom now. And it's now in an uptrend. Yesterday's sell-off got bought up. So Richard Hart, good to see him. Fighting back. So let's see. This guy says, will Tau drop sub $200? So you already had Tau sub 200 the other week. Now, will it go back below 200 is the question. 
And that's hard to say because, you know, for the most part, Tau can trade on its own. Tau can be like Casper where it can go up even if Bitcoin is going down or sideways. Right? It's one of those rare assets that has its own pulse and it has its own movements and it doesn't completely rely on Bitcoin, you know, for market direction. And that's largely because it's really, really decentralized in the sense that it was a fair launch, you know, no VCs, no pre-sale bag holders, no market makers, you know, that got free tokens from the team to, to move the market and, and move price around. Right. It's really if, if a market maker wants to manipulate price, they need to buy all the Tau on the open market to do so. And it requires a lot of capital. So, you know, we have real organic price action with something like Tau. Caspa also has it. Not so much anymore, actually, because a lot of centralized exchanges have introduced futures contracts. Um, but nonetheless, the spot trading of something like Tau is largely, largely decentralized and it's organic price action. Now, with that being said, most of it is staked right now. There is no unstaking period. So, you know, it doesn't mean much, but it does mean something that it's mostly staked. Now, for Tau on the daily time frame, again, we have a range low down here at $222 and the range high up here at $307. For a brief period of time in early January, we were trading below 200 on these wicks lower. And this was also a deviation from the range low. We have since reclaimed the range low and broken this daily trend line to the upside. All right, this is a bullish breakout. So there's a chance that this is the low for Tau. All right, it was already put in at $192. With that being said, you do want to watch and see if price does make its way back to this range low at $220. And if it does break it to the downside, you simply want to use this trend line as your guide. All right, I would not overcomplicate this analysis. And I would look, look for a price to go ahead and retest the trend line and see it hold as support. So we'll see where that comes into play if it even does happen. But I would potentially be waiting somewhere around $170 to $175. Set your alerts on Tau if you want to get it below $200. Let's see, balls and holes. He says, bro, I don't know, man. $34 trillion in debt. ETF was sell the news. The SEC lawsuits are everywhere. And the only thing we got left is the halving. We also have the Ethereum spot ETF. Don't forget that. That's pretty big. CEOs are saying 2 million a coin by 2025, which should make a breakout. I think that means BR like now. I would say patience, balls and holes, right? Trying to time the market exactly is nearly impossible. But if you have a general bias like for me my general bias on the higher time frames is up i'm still expecting 2024 to be a very good year for the crypto market but i know it will take patience to get there so yeah i mean you have a very pessimistic comment um you know a very glass half empty comment you know, I'm largely a bull in the higher time frame, so I think we have a lot to look forward to this year. That's just my take on things. You know, I'm largely exposed and positioned in the market for higher here on altcoins. And, you know, if I'm right, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with the risk reward is a better way to put it, right? Not if I'm right or wrong. It's I'm comfortable with my risk to reward ratio, right? If I'm right, I'm going to make a lot of money. If I'm wrong, you know, I'll lose a good amount of money, but I'm comfortable with that risk reward. If you're not, well then, you know, you can reduce your exposure. That's my take on your comment here in the live chat. Let's see, we have Jazzy. He says, good to see you, Legend. Can you please take a look at router protocol? We can certainly look at router protocol, the route token. So route right now, it's showing a lot of resilience. The market cap is still hovering at $100 million. All right, it's currently $106 million. Now, a lot of altcoins have pulled back substantially. And something like Router Protocol is holding up very strong. Right? As you can see, price broke structure to the downside. But this level from $650 to $6 that 
you know, I've been speaking about for quite some time. I've outlined this level for you a lot. Right, so you guys should already be familiar with it. It ended up holding, right? Buyers stepped in right at the level. Um, people probably had their limit order set there, drove the price back up and reclaimed the trend line. Now, overall, I, I understand router protocol. It, it's been a very slow moving coin, right? Compared to a lot of the first movers, if you will, like Render, like Caspa, like Tau, like INJ, ATOR earlier in the year. Ta or route has been a very slow mover. You know, I'm expecting it to start to pick up heavily, um, but I understand also that it takes patience to hold a project like this and see it through until the end. You know, if you want those 50x, 100x returns, which are possible for router protocol, I do expect it to, to pull off something like that. Now again, this is showing a lot of resilience. I would look for moves back down into this structure. Again, anything sub $6 is a very, very strong, obvious buy. But I think the router protocol, if it does lose this trend line and break this wick low at $6.21, I will be looking for it around $6 and below, right? 550 to six going forward. I don't think it's gonna last long. I think people will be buying the dip personally because they see what I see and they understand the fundamentals of this project and you know, I'm, I'm looking at three figures per router protocol token. So that means $100 plus. We'll see how we go. Rigoberto says, smash the like button. Appreciate you, Rigoberto. Weezong10 says, look at Phi. I believe that's B-Bank. Right, B-Bank launched a new token called Phi. Take a look at B Bank or Fidium over here. $89 million market cap. I mean, there's not much to say here. I talked about this in the last live stream last week in the sense that I'm not gonna chase after this project. I think it's very solid fundamentally and I think it likely will continue to go higher. But at this point in time for me to buy it now, right? I mean, I'm already established with my main core positions and my highest conviction bags. Because again, my strategy on how I play the bull run, I concentrate the majority of my money, of my capital into my highest conviction bets, altcoins, right? So if I'm going to start adding positions, first of all, they would be on the smaller side right now. And they have to basically, I have to be convinced that they'll outperform my already existing portfolio picks, right? I can just add to what I already have that I've built high conviction in. This is me personally, but... You know, Fidium, great project. It likely will continue to go higher. As you can see, it's marching higher here, making new highs. Holding the structure at two cents, and then it looks like it's about to fly. I mean, there's not much to say in terms of this chart. It looks great, but we can go over buy zones if it does pull back, which is what we'll do right now. I see 1.6 to 1.3 cents as your levels to wait for a pullback on FI if that's what you're waiting for. But I mean, overall, this looks very strong. Block bank. All right, it's taking forever to load. We'll come back to that. We have Henry XXII. He says, opening YouTube to see an Empire live stream going. What a treat. Appreciate your support, Henry. Good to see you here. Nemo938 says, hey man, what do you think of ELY? Alyssa AR. Never heard of ELY. So 24 hour trading volume, $76,000, fully diluted market cap, $2.8 million, right? Largely, this is like a, 
it's a very micro cap project. You have to be very careful with these. Um, there's a lot of people right now just capturing on the crypto hype, launching a project with basic development and coding skills, and they're just looking to make a quick buck, get out, and then make a new project next month, and just keep on you know siphoning money out of the crypto market. So I'll be very careful about stuff like this. Now, this chart, it's starting to break out after... You know, a very slow launch period. It pumped, pumped 9x, pumped 8, 9x in a few days. Pulled back 50%. I would be very careful of this project personally. I don't really like it. I don't know what it is too much. Um, but yeah, that's my take on it. Uh, Andrew, are you still in mask? Yeah, so I mean the mask trade, it's based off of the weekly time frame. Right? If you look at this weekly, if you look at the weekly time frame here, and the daily as well, Right, it's a it's a very obvious ascending triangle. Price is compressing its wedging. Now we did just break this trend line to the downside, so I ha most likely probability speaking, these snap and they break up to the upside. But of course, the market is always right, and anything could happen, right? And I have seen these patterns break down. All right, so maybe we'll I'll be wrong here. Uh, but nonetheless, mask still. I mean, on your daily. We're now at these EMA supports, all right? And we just had a cross where we had the 100 simple moving average cross above the daily 200, all right? So you can call that some kind of golden cross, if you will. But yeah, I look at all this as chop and I'm expecting a breakout and trend up soon on mask. All right, this trade is still valid. It has not been invalidated. If we close the daily below these EMAs, then okay, yeah, maybe I'll get out of it. Maybe I'll be invalidated. But as you can see, no daily candle has closed below this um, this pink EMA from November 3rd. All right, but if we start closing daily candles below it, then yes, I will get out. But as of right now, it's still valid. And we're in demand. I mean, yeah. Still a valid trade setup, in my opinion. Gary M says, what's your thoughts on the next narrative play? I'm hearing D-Pin is the next narrative. What's your view on this? Yeah, D-Pin is very popular. D-Pin is a very popular narrative. Now, with that being said, I mean, Mask Network, it's not necessarily something like helium or honey, um, but it does kind of fit into that narrative. Now, if we want to play the deep pin narrative, you have Hive Mapper Honey, you have Ator, you have OKN, Zero Knowledge Network, right? If you want to play that narrative, there's a lot of fundamentally solid projects to buy for the decentralized private infrastructure network narrative, Ator as well, right? Ator is something that I do hold. Um, there's a lot of options for deep in projects and if that's going to be the next narrative, which I think it can very well be, we've already seen them tick up, uh, but these would be three that I would first look into if I were you. And speaking about ATOR, because we're already talking about it. Market's very slow. It's like watching paint dry right now. 
right? This is a time I was I was writing about this in my Discord group yesterday. I'm, I'll share it with you guys so that you, you can see it. Because this is an important message, and I think a lot of people. This is what most people screw up right now. When things are slow, they want to do all these different things. They they think they need to be constantly doing, you know, moving things around, buying and selling. It's an illusion of action, and most people end up making less money in the end because they're doing so many things and moving around all these parts of their portfolio and you know selling things they've held for months to buy some new meme coin this is when most people screw up and i mean looking at these charts right these charts they're they're really abysmal like these past four daily candles on ator we have gone literally nowhere right i mean this four hour chart like this is just extremely slow price action it requires a lot of patience and discipline to sit through something like this anyways my message yesterday uh we've been rage bound for a few months essentially i'm expecting another leg higher before the halving leading into the halving reason being the total three chart looks amazing All right the total three on the weekly here there's no reason to panic right now all right, this is the bear market accumulation range high at 450 billion. We broke out of it. We've retested it multiple times. It's holding as support. All right, the total three still looks great. I'm expecting all coins to gap up and you know fill this gap towards 800 billion relatively soon when Bitcoin can start to pick up again. Anyways, the way crypto bull runs work, they the market goes up gradually and then it all happens at once. This is a proven fact. If you guys have been through a bull run before, you know that it's very, very slow for years. And then bam, in a few months is when most of the parabolic moves happen. Within a few days, realistically, is when most of your money is made. All right, so with that being said, of course, there's gonna be outlier coins that are gonna move at any given time, but you need to see the bigger picture. And there's been many studies that have shown the best performing investment portfolios are the ones that don't get touched, the ones that aren't micromanaged, where you're constantly changing things around. And usually these portfolios, they belong to dead people because a dead person can't change things around and there's no emotions involved. They buy assets and they hold them for a number of years and they tend to outperform actively managed portfolios. So if you're out there right now, you know, you're holding a bunch of altcoins and you see all this new stuff pop up and you wanna buy all this new stuff, because it's getting talked about more on Twitter or X. And you go and sell all the coins you already bought that you already did research on to get these new ones. You're probably going to get outperformed when the dust settles at the end of the bull run. So again, looking at charts like ATOR right now, we'll look at Honey, uh, Honey Hive Mapper. It's on Coinbase. It just got listed on Coinbase. It's very interesting. That usually is not a great sign when something gets listed on Coinbase. And as you can see, it's been down only from that list from 35 cents to 20 cents. That's a substantial pullback. <laughs> when this got listed on Coinbase on January 17th, and that marked the, the local top, it appears. Yeah, this went from you know 10 cents to 35 cents, it got listed on Coinbase, now it's down to 21 cents. Again, we're talking about deep pin projects, decentralized private infrastructure projects. Hive Mapper Honey, definitely a good one. Um, you know, I see it coming back down to 20 to 17 cents. Ator. Eighty to seventy-five cents on a tour. And then something like OKN. OKN is what everybody ran to when a tours nodes got denied by the Tor network. Everybody was like, "We have to buy this one now." Right? Everybody just flip flops from the same narrative, different projects. Um, this is 
the best looking chart out of the three, I'd say. I would say that this is the best looking chart out of the three. And your buy zone is down here, 0 0.0013 cents. That's basically 13% of one penny. <clears throat> Anyways, that if you're looking at um, D pin projects, I would start with these. These are some of the top ones. And then patiently wait for your buy levels to get hit. In terms of other narrative plays, I think Ethereum betas are still going to be a narrative. All right, so you have ENS, Ethereum name service. Pulling back substantially. I would wait for Bitcoin to go sub 40K before you start considering entries on any of these because they can pull back a lot. They can really pull back a lot. 20% to potentially 35, 40%. Anyways, for ENS, I would be looking around 15 bucks. But Ethereum beta is definitely another, uh, definitely another narrative that could pick up a lot. See, we got Michael, he says, greetings to everyone. Hello, Connor, hope all is still going well with you and you're doing marvelously well. Nice to have you back live streaming. Keep up the good work, we appreciate you, sir. Thank you, Michael, I appreciate that. Currently, on the beach in Sydney, Australia, so I mean, things are going well, but it's a bit hard to create content when you're traveling a lot. So I am looking forward to setting up shop for a few weeks and getting into the flow of things again and really start producing a ton of content. Um, but with that being said, all is well, and I appreciate your support, Michael. Thank you. Gary M, do you have any GambleFi coins? I do not have any GambleFi coins, no. And my view on based in dubs, GambleFi ecosystem plays, circulating supply already maxed out. So yeah, GambleFi is not a narrative that I'm really um, invested in. Now, Dubs is a good project. Thirty-five mil market cap. It's pulled back fifty percent. Fifty percent pullback, exactly. Yeah, I mean, this is a very nice dip, right? You might not. This might not be the exact bottom, right? It could go down here to you know, 285 or potentially, you know, 250, 260, but you're not buying a top, you're buying a 50% retracement on something like dubs. And yeah, so the, the trick is don't try and get the exact bottom. If, if you're looking to buy into a project, it could be anything, it doesn't have to be dubs. Don't try and get that exact bottom, but instead average in to your spot bag so that in case it does start to take off, at least you have some kind of positioning. No, to answer your question, I don't have any GambleFi projects. Buddha for you says, good morning from South Africa. Appreciate that. Sorel J says, hi, Connor. Can you review FI, Fidium? We already went over Fidium early on, earlier on in the live stream. Definitely go ahead and rewind the live stream to take a look at B-Bank Fidium. Thoughts on Roy's inscription marketplace. Uh, there's already a lot of inscription marketplaces out there, and I'm not sure what Roids is doing differently than the other inscription marketplaces, but it sounds like another pop-up project. Again, there's so many projects that pop up. The developer has you know, some basic coding developing experience, and he, he makes a project, and you know he's basically just looking to make a quick buck, exit, and then in a month he'll make another new project, and... You know, a lot of the new stuff out there, I don't know for sure, so I don't know anything about roids, but a lot of these new projects that pop up that are copycats of other things, it's most likely just the development uh, team trying to make a quick buck and take our money. So I'm very careful about investing into all this new stuff because 
like I said, most of them are copycat projects and yeah, it's just the team trying to make some money and then disappear and then come back in a month with a new project that's a copycat of something else. Push it on Twitter, hire some influencers. Like this, this market overall is a big joke, right? When you see how it works, that's why I'm so careful with the altcoins that I select to buy because I see how things work. And it's really like, it's pathetic that people fall for most of this stuff. Um, yeah, that's my answer to, to Roids. Nothing against Roids. I don't know anything about the project, but it sounds like a copycat. And most copycats are just getting the team rich and taking everybody else's money. Uh, or labs, or do you swap? Thirty-eight mil market. Uh, I have heard of this one before. I haven't used this. I mean, listen, BRC twenties and, and ordinals. They will have a very good bull market, in my opinion. Um. I mean, my most recent ordinal play is it. SHNT Sats Hunters, right? And I can do all my inscription service needs directly through that. So I don't need to go chase after all these copycat ones and all this other stuff. Um, it's really not a narrative that I'm heavily focused on either. Anyways, hope that answers your question about ordinals and BRC20s. And overall, copycat projects. Like, there's so many copycat projects. Unibot, the first bot project. And all of a sudden, there's a hundred different bot tokens out there. And, um, you know, they pump and then they sell off because the team and all the influencers they paid are just taking the money. So, a lot of that going on. Be very careful before you start risking your hard-earned capital in some new copycat project. Can you take a look at TLOS Telos? So this is a, a gaming layer one blockchain, Telos TLOS. And it's starting to get some attention recently. As you can see with the pump here. Bottomed out at six cents, it's made its way all the way up to 27 cents. So that's a nice 4X in price right there. Now this does not fit my criteria for all coins fully in terms of something that I want to hold in my own portfolio. Reason being it's been around since 2019. So it's already experienced a bear market and then a bull run now back to another bear market. So it's not necessarily something that I look for. Um, but with that being said, you know, it, it pulled a it pulled a 50x already in the last run. But if this was something that you're interested in, you have bottomed out. Right? You have bottomed out obviously here in September and October at six cents. And now you're right at this accumulation range resistance. So Telos right now is in a very. All right, we should be back. I think my live stream was just lagging there for a moment. Anyways, Telos TLOS 25 cents is your breakout level. 23 to 25, you bottomed out, you know, you're at the accumulation um, resistance on a weekly time frame going back one year, one year and a half, I should say. So yeah, I mean, the chart looks really good here. You break 25 cents and you gap up to 50 cents. Looks good. And your demand zone is 20 cents to 16 cents on Telos. Luca Marich. What are your favorite altcoins for this next year? 
So my favorite altcoins for this next year, I mean, they haven't really changed. They have somewhat changed from my free ebook. There's been a few new additions. Um, but if you want to know like the projects that I hold, if you want to know my exact portfolio, join my Discord group. You can join through my Whoop page. The link is down in the description below. Um, but if you just want to kind of get an overall take on my strategy and the altcoins that I'm looking at, this ebook was released at the beginning of September 2023, and it goes over all that. So I would start there. Now, the altcoins that I'm interested in, how do I want to word this? It may not be for you. My strategy could not be for you potentially, right? I focus on a high growth strategy where I take on a lot of risk. If I was only looking for, say, a, a 5 to 10x, I would stick with mostly mid caps or, or high caps now. But coins like INJ, Render, Caspa, and Tau, right? If I was only looking for, say, like a 10x maybe potentially a little bit more, um, I wouldn't stick to projects like these. But if I was after 30X, 50X, 100X, then I would go after the altcoins that I speak a lot, a lot about. You know, I recently made a video on router protocol. This is one of my favorite altcoins. Um, I really like Relio Network Rio. Let's talk about Rio actually. So Rio, we wanna go down here. We wanna see this holds 56 to 50 cents on Rio and I mean this is a the market cap is still so low and the growth potential is still so high for Rio this is still my main real world asset coin I see we have somebody in the live chat talking about uh, trade poly trade another real world asset project and a 33 mil market cap Rio is relatively similar in market cap I don't hold any poly trade, but I know that this is a solid project. And yeah, I mean, this thing just marching up, making new highs. This is a beautiful chart. Really strong looking chart. Your buy levels would be around 80 cents. But yeah, it depends on your goals, your risk appetite, where, how much money you're starting with, you know, your goal, what amount you want to grow it to in terms of the, the, the best route to take for your investment portfolio, how you want to invest for this run. Would I recommend investing in old, old, old coins like, you know, Uniswap and Theta and, you know, SushiSwap and all this other old stuff, Solana? No, no, I don't. That's not how I do things. Some people are different. Some people like like the older dino coins, me personally, again, I go over it in detail in my free ebook. But there's a strict set of criteria that I look for for adding altcoins and buying altcoins. So I need to make sure that they pass that rigorous test before I would go ahead and consider adding them. With that being said, talking about Solana, so the mobile phone is available for pre-order again all right so it, it sold out but now you can pre-order it and it will ship in 2025 all right and it's, this is still in the founder window meaning that it will come with a wallet and you'll get airdrops all right and i'm not even going to share my referral link but if you guys do want a solana phone for $450, I think it's gonna be worth it to buy. Because in airdrops alone, you make that money back. So I would I would look into the Solana mobile phone, solanamobile.com. If you do wanna you know get this phone, I think it'll be worth it. 450 bucks, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, let's see. WNT is a good deep pin too. There's a lot of good deep pin networks out there. 
Sword Chain is also coming out with their deep pin similar to Hive Mapper. That's what I was saying, right? So there's so many copycat projects. Oh, this one's a deep pin. That's a deep pin. This one's a deep pin. Everything's a deep pin. Buy it. It's the hot narrative, right? Just be careful. Mostly the team is going to get rich and retail investors will be left holding worthless tokens. So be careful about all the copycat projects out there. Is Metis one? Um, Metis is very solid. I don't hold any Metis. Very nice pump. You're pulling back. I wouldn't overcomplicate this at all. I would look for a sweep of $71, and I would look for longs when it does do that. All right, look for a sweep there and a reclaim, and get long. That's how I would play Metis. If it's going to go higher, it should grab the liquidity here and then reverse. All right, so you can play a stop. Watch out for this low as well at $65. But if this is going to continue higher, Metis, it will grab this liquidity, it will quickly reclaim, and then it'll start trending higher. ENS was the same thing not too long ago. Right, ENS over here. It had its initial pump up. Created this wick on the daily time frame. What happened, price came down, grabbed the liquidity, and then took off. All right, so if Metis is going to continue higher, I mean, it already kind of did that, huh? Did that here. But you want to see this hold as support. At around 70 bucks. Z had says, how low can Bitcoin go? So I talked about that at the beginning of the live stream, but I'm looking at 40K to 35K. And then I'll be looking to buy altcoins when Bitcoin is down there. Gary M says, router protocol is patiently waiting for some fireworks. Have you heard of Trios? What's your view on this project? Low supply? Yes, I have heard of Trios. I've definitely heard of Trios. It's a coin that I traded a lot in 2021. Now it's very solid. You know, back then it was only an idea. Now it's an actual, you know, project. They have things going on. They've built a lot. Good tokenomics, as you've mentioned, it's also deflationary. So Trios is a good project. I think it's definitely, it's worth a position. It passes my criteria. Even though it's a bit of an older coin, like I said, they didn't have anything happening in the last bull run. It was pure speculation. Now Trios, I think it's very solid. Do I hold it personally? No. But with that being said, I think it's worth holding at least a small position, right? If you're looking for a good altcoin with a good narrative, with a good team, with good tech, and with high growth potential, Trios does pass the test. All right, so it's you know one of the altcoins that I recommend, if you will, even though I don't give financial advice. Now, with that being said, you have your ten dollars support. What more could you ask for, right? You have a thirty-six percent discount. Went as low as forty-seven percent. You know, maybe you come down here to around eight fifty. I would say if you want to. You know, try and time the bottom. Anything below $10 is going to be a really good entry in the grand scheme of things. I can definitely see Trios trading for over $100 per coin. So I think you're looking at at least like a 10x at the very, very minimum. Most likely much higher. Given that the market cap of this thing is very low still. You know, it's only 109 mil market cap. Similar to router protocol, right? So if this goes to say a bill... You know, that's a 10x, 2 billion, 20x, so on and so forth. So, you know, this could go 30x, 50x um, relatively easily in the bull run. Anyway, same thing with route, similar. Sniff says he's thinking about selling his Mora, but he's going to tough it out. Has Mora done anything since we last spoke about it? No, it hasn't. 
So yeah, just a lot of a lot of consolidation on this Mora chart. It's very slow. So if you're bullish on this, it doesn't look bad. But yeah, all you need is patience because it's not trending. It's it's dead sideways. Daisy says H bar and GRT. Yes, I would love to take a look at H bar and GRT. Let's look at these charts and go over my analysis. So, this is the monthly time frame on H bar. And on the one month, objectively speaking, this looks quite bullish on the one month. I mean, this is a clear, you know, W double bottom, right? You have a W double bottom here. Two higher lows. This is a monthly time frame chart. So you're looking for a monthly breakout above eight and a half cents. Now, if we go to the weekly, we can see in the weekly that we had this failed Failed weekly breakout at 10 cents. Okay, so with that, you know, we're pulling back. And then on our daily time frame, where are we pulling back to? Well, we have an obvious rally base rally level here. And that also comes into play with our daily moving averages, right? So we have demand, higher time frame demand in our, our moving averages. Um, all coming into play at that seven cent level. Okay, so H bar seven cents. Here's the thing with where we are in the cycle, if you're expecting new lows on these altcoins or for them to retest their bottoms, it will take something like March 2020, the black swan we had there, to send altcoins that low. I'm not sure what's planned for this year, right? I'm not sure what's going to happen if we have another black swan and we get something like that. But you know, if, if you're waiting for like the lows on all coins to get tested again, you have to understand that we need a mega black swan to take the market that low. So probability speaking, it's probably not gonna happen. So with that being said, you wanna see H-bar hold seven cents. You wanna see it hold the bottom of this demand zone. And like we just saw on the, on the monthly time frame, it's trying to break out of a monthly accumulation. All right, and that starts by getting over 10 cents and you wanna see this level hold at seven. All right, so this is your buy zone, seven cents, really seven and a half down to 6.9, um, 6.7 I should say. But yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll call it with an average at seven cents on H bar. And again, on the monthly time frame, you need to close a, a weekly monthly candle above 10 cents to confirm this breakout. But yeah, it doesn't look bad. That's H bar. And there's no sense in looking at the four hour time frame because again, the market is dead slow. It's been like watching paint dry recently. It's very boring. I would stick to the daily, weekly and monthly charts right now to find your levels and plan ahead on what's going to happen next. And then GRT will do the same thing. So as you guys see, uh, this one worked out well, filled the gap up to 22 cents, and now it's pulled back along with the rest of the market. Anyways, we'll start again on the monthly and work our way down. And if you guys are newer to technical analysis and you wanna learn how to start reading charts, I always recommend you start on the higher time frames and then you zoom your way in. Now, this is a monthly chart for GRT. Let's get rid of all this, we don't need it anymore. So what do we have here? Again, we have, we have a double bottom structure, right, in the bear market. 
but we haven't necessarily confirmed a breakout. Right, we haven't really broken the neckline on these very higher time frame breakouts. And when the necklines break, you know, that's going to be the real bull run. The parabolic moves that we're so used to in crypto. Anyways, for GRT here, the range high is 17, 17 to 18 cents. 20 cents. Um, this is your weekly time frame. I mean, this is your level right here at 15 cents. And again, moving average is coming into play right in this weekly demand zone from 15 cents down to around 13 and a half. So for GRT, you want to see these hold. It can still go lower, right? It can still drop another 13, 14% down to say 13.6 cents. But overall, right, you want to see these structures hold and then you want to see this monthly breakout where you can clear this, clear this gap. Clear this zone. All right, you want to see it clear this zone for higher. You want to see a breakout on the monthly and weekly time frames. Obviously daily as well. So until that happens, I would expect more chicken scratch, consolidation sideways, slow, boring, um, you know, pullbacks. You really don't want to see this go lower than 12 and a half, 13 cents on GRT. And I mean, your upside targets are very high, right? You have 50 cents, you have 80 cents, you have a dollar eight cents, you have a dollar 32 cents, you have a dollar 65, then you have two dollars. I'm I doubt it will make a new all time high. There's been so much dilution that it likely will never make a new all time high. Uh, but anyways, if even if, even if it goes back to a dollar fifty, you have a ten x, and it's already a multi billion dollar market cap coin, so not much more you could ask for. So that's H bar and G R T. Uh, what else is going on? Shout out to Raja, Raja in the live chat. He said, it's good to see the live fully functional. Aho. Thank you, Raja. Wei Ziyang Tan says, I want to hit $5 or er, $5 million this run. I invested in B-Bank, IXS trade and RVST with mid five figures. Wish me luck. All right, so if you went in with 50K, well, you need You need a hundred X for five mil, huh? For a moment. Let's do some math, some basic math. So if you if you invested fifty thousand dollars, you need your projects to one hundred X to get to five mil. Now I'm gonna assume that's off of today's entries because if you bought B Bank and you know trade a few months ago, you would have turned that 50k to you know 200, 300k at this point, if not more, which is a lot more attainable to hit your number of five million dollars. So it's important to have you know realistic expectations at the same time, leaving your mind open for those massive, huge parabolic moves and gains. Um, but yeah, I mean, a hundred X from current prices is a lot harder than a hundred X from prices a few months ago. After every double of fifth or a 100 X becomes a 50 X, right? So you, your entries are, 
are very important. Anyways, I wish you luck. I hope you hit that $5 million number. Let's see. Raja says, Demo, what do you make of the project and potential entry levels? Looking to add some to my portfolio today. So I have never heard of Demo before. Hundred mil market cap, that looks good. On Coinbase, it's positive. It's been on Coinbase since April of last year. Was this real world assets or something? Okay, Internet of Things. Interesting. So potential buy levels. Definitely looks shaky right over here. I mean, your potential buy levels, you have this bottom of its previous range at say 38 cents to 33 cents. And then I would also set a line at 31 cents and I would put in alert. Add alert, I would say demo, demo buy level, right? That's down here. Yeah, 31 cents. And then maybe you get a wick down to 25. But I would say anywhere around 31 would serve you well. Uh, thoughts on Say? So yeah, Say has been bullish, but I mean, it's largely dependent on what Bitcoin is doing currently. So. Yeah, gave back that whole recent pump. This is not something you want to see. It's not something you want to see at all. Um, local top, right? Double top. Breaking through your neckline. You already lost your trend line. It does look like it's coming back down closer to 50 cents. Now, in my Discord the other week, I literally said I, I'm not really interested in say until it comes back to 50 cents and it looks like it's coming back to 50. So when it comes back into this demand zone, I'll be interested again. But right now, it doesn't look great. Uh, can you look at Crown? Yes, we can look at Crown. So crown right now, another altcoin that I do personally hold myself here. Um, yeah, 50 cents is your level. 53 to 40. Anything in, in this zone, this is your buy level on Crown. But yeah, this is such a bullish gaming project. I think Alex Becker recently mentioned it. It's been pretty funny the past few months. Every gaming coin that I've bought, um, you know, Becker has ended up mentioning it shortly after. So, got my pulse on the gaming market quite well. Anyways, I'm very bullish on Crown. I think it could potentially be an Axie Infinity type of game where it can reach a multi-billion dollar crypto market cap. So I think it has high growth potential, new coin, strong team, never seen a bull run before. I'm very bullish on Crown. I think it's definitely worth having at least a small position. 
I don't even follow them on Twitter, but anyways, horse racing metaverse game on Solana. Definitely one worth considering if you want gaming exposure. And again, 53 to 41 cents. That, those are your buy levels for Crown. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Let me check out Beam. Well, here's the thing. If you're long, you need this to bounce right now or else you're you're done though. Right, if you're long right now, you need it to bounce from this this level. If it doesn't, well You know, things can get ugly relatively quickly. You know, we could, we could come down to 1.3. So, you need it to bounce right now on Beam. You're in, you're in the bottom of the range, right? So, if you don't hold this level, you're going lower. Uh, let's see. Any tokens that can compare to Solana in the future? In terms of price performance or layer one adoption, um, I mean my my coins. You know my mid my high caps. Inj Tau Render Caspa. That's how I would answer that question. Apparently Monad is going to be the new Solana. It's going to launch soon. A new a new layer one network. Juno. Sniff is accumulating Juno at 46 cents. All time high is $46. So Juno, very similar to a beam. You know, if you're long, you need it to bounce from here or it's coming down to here. Uh, it's coming down to 30 if it can't hold 40. And flicks at 8 cents with Sniff's greatest ever entry. Right now at 26. Indeed, a very good entry, Sniff. Sitting on a clean 3x right now. You know, you were sitting on a, a, a 4.5x before. So flicks. This is your level on flicks, 25 to 20. Bob, any updates on masks? Yeah, I already updated mask. I'm gonna assume you just joined the stream recently, uh, but we went over mask and we updated it. Essentially, it's still valid. Uh, trade is still valid. If it closes below the daily, the daily candles, if they close below these moving averages, you know, then it would be invalid. Uh, but notice how from November 3rd, we have not closed any daily candles below uh, the daily 200 EMA. We just had a golden cross. Um, there's no reason to freak out over the position, or in my opinion, it's still valid. Anyways, guys. We've been going live for an hour and 15 minutes from Sydney, Australia. Hope you guys have enjoyed the live stream. Smash up that like button if you have enjoyed it so far and you've been with me the whole time and you haven't smashed that like button yet. Nonetheless, it is time to start wrapping things up right now. Again, it's hard for me to make content when I'm traveling, but I wanna make things very clear. I only have 
one account on every platform, all right? One account on YouTube, one Twitter account. I have one Discord server. I have my personal Telegram account and I have the Crypto Empire um, Telegram account, but I only post in my groups. You need to double check all the usernames because I will never message you first. I will never ask you how your trading is going or ask you for um, a substantial amount of money for trading mentorship, right? I don't offer that. I don't do that. If somebody's messaging you from an account that looks like me, it's not me. It's somebody basically pretending to be me to scam you. All right, so be very careful. I see people getting um, falling for this stuff all the time, and there's nothing I can do about it. People making money off of my name and my hard work, um, pretending to be me. You need to double and triple check everything. I will never message you first about that kind of stuff. And with that being said, again, when I'm traveling, it's hard for me to make content, but I'll be here for about two weeks, okay? So I'm gonna set a little bit, and we're gonna start cranking some stuff out. So if you're brand new to Crypto Empire, smash that subscribe button down below. I appreciate all of your support and patience over this time period where I'm, I'm fully aware that I haven't been as active and that doesn't sit too well with me, but that's life. Life isn't perfect. Sometimes it's a little bit messy, but you gotta keep things going. So I hope that you guys did enjoy this live stream. I'll see you all very soon. Hope you're all enjoying yourselves, having a great weekend. Happy Sunday to everybody on the East Coast over in the US. If you're like myself over here down under, in Australia, it's already Monday. It's already, um, it's like 3 p.m., which is crazy. Anyways, I'll see all you guys very soon. Thank you for being here. Connor from Crypto Empire signing out. I'll see you in the next video.